in the previous class please pay attention i'll quickly glance through complex envelope of bandpass signals right so in order to understand complex envelope of bandpass signals you should have clear understanding of what is a baseband signal and what is a passband signal when i talk about baseband signal baseband signal is nothing but a low frequency signal which is the source of information uh, namely audio video or image these are the low frequency information or message signals whereas passband is nothing but your modulated signal which is a high frequency signal such as am fm pm etc right and in some applications we do transmit the signal without modulation such as landline but in most applications we do modulation so that signal can be transmitted wirelessly for long distance uh, communication example satellite signals so when i talk about baseband signals the audio signal is in low frequency range that is from 0 to 20 kilohertz video signal ranges from 0 to 55 megahertz and uh, under passband we have am fm which are high frequency signals okay therefore passband is nothing but a high frequency signal and this passband is also referred to as band pass signal okay so this is a high frequency signal now in order to understand this we had considered an example so this is the example that we had considered at the transmitter your audio signal is nothing but your message signal and that message signal is a low frequency signal which is referred to as baseband signal okay audio signal is a message signal and that is referred to as baseband signal which is a low frequency signal then this signal passes through amplifier and modulator and then you'll transmit it via antenna and this signal that you are going to transmit is a high frequency signal such as am or fm and this is called the passband signal okay then at the receiver the same passband signal will be available at the input of the receiver and then the receiver will perform demodulation and this demodulated signal is nothing but estimate of your baseband signal this is also nothing but the estimate of your message signal okay and now complex envelope is nothing but a method which helps us in estimating the baseband signal even in the presence of passband signal okay so in order to understand this we had considered uh, a passband sig uh, signal or bandpass signal sft when i say bandpass signal it is a high frequency signal such as am and its corresponding fourier transform is s of f and if i want to draw the spectrum of s of f this is how it is going to look like it will have fc plus fc and minus fc and these are the uh, positive and negative frequency spectrums okay and here for the purpose of simplicity we have written fc but strictly speaking it will be fc plus w here and here it will be minus fc minus w where w is nothing but your message signal frequency generally what will happen is the uh, uh, summation of fc plus fm will be Uh, so high that we equate it to fc right so that is the reason why here you can see we have just written fc it does not mean that w is not present it is also present but for the purpose of simplicity we have just mentioned it as fc but strictly speaking you have both fc and w right now complex envelope is given by the equation s of t plus j into s cap of t in time domain and in frequency domain this is the equation and for incorporating that we will take s cap of f and this is the spectrum of j into uh, s cap of f the call this as spectrum 2 as per equation 1 what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to add the spectrum of s of f and the spectrum of j into s cap of f right so this is spectrum 2 that is j into s cap of f in the previous slide we saw s of f spectrum so when i add these two spectrums when i add these two spectrum this is the resultant spectrum you can clearly see it is very easy to add these two spectrums at minus fc amplitude here is 1 but here it is minus 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 here at plus fc amplitude is 1 here also at plus fc amplitude is 1 therefore you will get 2 now if i want to illustrate this spectrum in the form of equation this is what i am going to do it is 2 sf for positive frequency and for uh, zero or negative frequency we don't have any signal okay so this is the 
resultant spectrum. Now, uh, if I make a shift of minus Fc to this spectrum, if I shift the spectrum by minus Fc, this is uh, another way of saying that you are subtracting minus Fc with Fc. So if you subtract Fc with Fc, what is the resultant frequency? It is going to be W, right? So when you shift the frequency spectrum by minus Fc, this is the resultant spectrum that you are going to get. And here the origin frequency will become zero. Right. Remember, I told you in the earlier slide that strictly speaking, we will be having Fc plus W. So here, so here the center frequency will become zero, but on the left side and right side, and the left on the left side and right side, you will be having W. Right? You'll be having W. This is minus W, this is plus W, and this W is your message frequency. And here amplitude will be W. Right. So this is the amplitude. Uh, two right now this concept of shifting minus fc in the frequency spectrum this concept of shifting minus fc in the frequency spectrum is realized by multiplying the term e power minus j2 pi fc t in the time domain so what i'll do i'll take the time domain equation s of t plus j into s cap of t and i'll multiply that by e power j 2 pi fc t when i do this this will mimic the behavior of shifting of minus fc in the frequency spectrum and that will shift the uh, frequency to zero frequency and the resultant spectrum that we saw here this spectrum which where it has a frequency from minus w to plus w is referred to as the complex envelope of baseband signal and the same is represented by s tilde of t which is equal to s of t plus j into s cap of t into e power minus j2 pi fct now this s tilde of t is the complex envelope of the baseband signal okay now if i draw the spectrum of this s tilde of t this looks like this here the amplitude is 2 into s of fc and its frequency is from minus w to w now here you can clearly see this spectrum is occupying a bandwidth of how much 2 w because it has frequencies in the positive side as well as in the negative side isn't it so therefore this uh, spectrum is occupying a bandwidth of 2 w now if you could recall to what we have uh, begun uh, discussing in the beginning of this module, our objective was to ensure that the bandwidth requirement can be reduced by 50%, right? So how can we reduce the bandwidth requirement? What I'll do is I'll pass the signal through a positive pre-envelope. That is what we have done here. I'll pass this through a positive pre-envelope. When I pass this through a positive pre-envelope, this is positive pre-envelope. When I pass this through positive pre-envelope, what this positive pre-envelope will do is it will allow the positive frequency that is plus w and it will remove or nullify the negative frequency thereby what is the bandwidth requirement now it is just w right so this is what is going to happen when i use positive pre envelope that is s plus of t similarly i can use the negative pre envelope that is s minus of t when i use the negative pre envelope what will happen I will be nullifying the positive frequencies and I'll be allowing the negative frequencies. But even in this case, the bandwidth requirement will just be W, right? So by passing this signal, this spectrum, which is the complex envelope through pre-envelope, positive pre-envelope or negative pre-envelope, we will ensure that the bandwidth requirement is reduced to just W from 2W, which was the case earlier. Okay, so that is why we are using pre envelope here, and that is implemented by multiplying s tilde of t, that is the complex envelope, with e power j 2 pi fct. Right, so this is what we have done, and as we have already discussed in detail in the previous class, complex envelope is a method which helps us in analyzing your system, communication system, by dispensing fc. As you saw in the previous slide, when I shift this fc what is happening is uh, the fc component is getting removed it is becoming zero therefore analysis of such a system or signal becomes easier when i go for complex envelope right as compared to the conventional method of analysis which will 
have the presence of carrier frequency FC. Here, when I go for complex annulus, we will be removing or dispensing FC, thus making our analysis much easier. However, your system should have the capability to handle complex notations. This is the catch here. If your system is not capable of handling complex notations, you can go for the conventional method, but this method is much easier to analyze your communication system in the baseband uh, domain because it will remove your high frequency FC, thus making our analysis easier. But your system or the receiver should have the capability to handle complex notations because when I talk about complex envelope, I'm talking about complex numbers or complex equation. Thus, right, thus correlating back to the example that we had considered earlier. This is the diagram that we had considered earlier. So you can see here, this is the passband signal S of T and this is the estimate of baseband signal S tilde of T. This S tilde of T is nothing but the baseband signal which is also referred to as your message signal, right? And when I say message signal, it is a low frequency signal, right? So uh, complex envelope gives us a method or a technique to estimate the baseband signal in the presence of passband signal okay so complex envelope is giving us a method to estimate baseband signal in the presence of passband signal and that will help us in analyzing the performance of communication system in an easier way because now we are performing our analysis in baseband when i say baseband i'm talking about low frequency because complex envelope as you saw will help us in removing the carrier frequency fc thus making our analysis much easier right so this is the knowledge that you should have before we proceed to the next topic that is canonical representation of bandpass signals right now before i uh, uh, dive deep into canonical representation of bandpass signals i want to quickly ask you a simple question regarding the equations that we have used so i have four notations here i want you to tell me what these equations represent so <clears throat> so far i've already covered all these things so if you want i can just quickly run through this is s of t you can see what is s of t you can see what is s tilde of t what is s tilde of t it is given here you can see s tilde of t is nothing but the complex envelope of baseband signal and earlier we have also discussed about uh, uh, g cap of t what is g cap of t g cap of t is the ebert transform similarly when I say G plus of T, what am I talking about? I'm talking about positive free envelope. Okay. So before I proceed, I want you to give me the answers for these notations so that I understand that you are in the same page, because if you don't have clarity regarding these equations, then there is no point in discussing canonical representation. Yes. Please give your answers in the chat box. What does S of T represent? Please give your answer in the chat box. What is S of T? Is it your baseband signal or passband signal? Please answer in the chat box. Is it your baseband signal or passband signal? It is a passband signal. Very good. Very good. Manohar, Diksha, Arjun, Divyashri, Duvana, very good. So it is a passband signal. When I say passband signal, what am I referring to? I am referring to a high frequency signal, isn't it? I am referring to a high frequency signal, say such as example FM. Okay, right. That's about S of T. Now, what is S cap of T? Please give your answers in the chat box. What is S cap of T? S cap of T. It is the very good Manohar. What about others? It is the Hilbert transform of, of what? S of T. Okay. It is the Hilbert transform of S of T.
it is the hilbert transform of s of t very good now what is s plus of t very good manohar chitra good what is s plus of t then i just discussed all these equations and this, these are the equations that we have been discussing from last couple of classes what is s plus of t what is s plus of t please answer in the chat box what is s plus of t tell me i just discussed this see what is it what is s plus of t i'm not asking you any equations i'm asking you the label of the equations what is s plus of t thank you very good jyotika okay arjun deepthi has given me the answer it is the pre envelope and is it positive pre envelope or negative pre envelope is it is a positive pre envelope very good right next good deepthi harshita chandan good have given me the answer next what is s tilde of t what is s tilde of t okay good arvind arshita what is s tilde of t then what is s tilde of t i'm asking questions like uh, school kids hmm? s tilde of t what is s tilde of t is the complex envelope it is the complex envelope of of your pass band signal that is s of t so you should have clear understanding of these equations before we delve deep into the canonical representation of band pass signals okay so s of t is the pass band signal s cap of t is the hilbert transform of s of t s plus of t is the positive pre envelope whereas s tilde of t is the complex envelope of pass band signal s of t okay now what i'll do is i will try to consider uh, an equation which helps us in connecting complex envelope with complex envelope with the canonical representation of band pass signals okay so all of you just uh, pay attention so as we have already discussed s of t s of t is the pass band signal and s cap of t is the hilbert transform of s of t s plus of t is the positive pre envelope and s tilde of t is the complex envelope of your pass band signal s of t okay right now what i'll do is i'll consider these two equations that is s tilde of t this is the equation that we have already discussed here see s tilde of t is equal to s of t plus j into s cap of t into e power j 2 pi f c t so i'll write this equation and i will call it as uh, equation 1 okay and similarly we have seen that positive pre envelope is given by s plus of t is equal to s tilde of t exponential j2 pi f c t so this equation i'll write here and i'll call it as equation 2 okay so any doubt at this point any doubt okay now i will look for the real part of positive pre envelope right so r e in the flower bracket uh, is written to represent real part so i'll focus on the real part of s plus of t okay i'll tell you why i'm focusing on the real part of s plus of t after we compute this okay because that ultimately leads in a meaningful result right so when i 
consider the real part of s plus of t what i'll do i'll write re and in the bracket i'll write s plus of t which is equal to re and you know that s plus of t is equal to s tilde of t into e power j 2 pi fct so i'll write s tilde into e power j 2 pi fct okay so any doubt at this point anyone has any doubt at this point because if you understand this equation then you can understand the relationship between the complex envelope and canonical representation okay so <laughs> this is the real part now what i'll do is i will try to compute the real part of s plus of t right so how do i compute the real part of s plus of t i'll just copy this paste it here right and here what is s tilde of t from equation one i know what is s tilde of t this is s of t plus j into s cap of t into e power j to pi f c t so what i'll do is i'll copy this right and i will paste in the place of s tilde of t right can i do this i'm just substituting s tilde of t, okay which is equal to s plus s of t plus j into s cap of t into e power j 2 pi f c t right now let me just copy paste this right now now tell me what is the simplified equation that i should write here so here you have e power minus j theta multiplied by e power j theta so what will be the product of these two exponentials please give your answers in the chat box or you can unmute and answer what is e power j theta into e power minus j theta it is one right so what can i uh, write as the answer here it is just this portion so i will remove this part because the product of e power j theta into e power minus j theta is one therefore it is removed anything multiplied by one is anything right so this is what i'm going to get now now let me again copy paste this now i want the real part of this equation so what is the real part of this equation please type in the chat box you know this is a complex equation right so if i want only the real part what should i take what is the real part of this equation it is s of t therefore it is s of t right so any doubt at this point anyone has any doubt this is s of t right so pretty straightforward now what is s of t we have got s of t what is s of t and someone tell me what is s of t we just discussed this few minutes ago what is s of t and someone tell me what is s of t what is the label for s of t that we have given it is nothing but your fast band signal right it is nothing but your fast band signal okay right now <coughs> this fast band signal s of t is also equal to the real part of s plus of t or in other words i can say that real part of your pre-envelope all of you listen carefully the real part of your pre-envelope will give us the original passband signal okay this is why we are considering the real part of pre-envelope because it will yield in the original passband signal okay not only this we started off with this equation that is the real part of pre envelope is equal to the real part of s tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t therefore i can also copy this and i can paste it here therefore i can say that s of t is also equal to the real part of s tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t because this the real part of s tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t is nothing but the real part of the positive pre envelope therefore i can say that s of t s of t is equal to what the real part of the complex envelope multiplied by e power j 2 pi fct okay so any doubt here 
anyone has any doubt should i explain this again if you want me to explain this again you have to comment or you you have to ask if not i'll proceed any doubt so we started off with considering these equations of uh, passband signal hilbert transform positive pre envelope and complex envelope of uh, the passband signal s tilde of t and we had considered these two equations that we have already discussed in the previous class that is the complex envelope equation and positive pre envelope equation right so what i'm doing is i'm interested in the real part of your positive pre envelope right so i'll write the real part of positive pre envelope s plus of t is equal to the real part of this okay the real part of this equation now in this equation what do i have i have s tilde of t in the place of s tilde of t what i'll do i'll substitute this equation when i substitute this equation what am i going to get this is what i'm going to get now here you have e power minus j theta multiplied by e power j theta therefore the product of these two will be equal to 1 or to strictly speaking e power uh, 0 e power 0 is nothing but 1 therefore this is the resultant equation now if i try to fetch the real part of this equation what am i going to get i'm going to get s of t because this is the imaginary part right now this s of t is nothing but the real part of positive pre envelope which is also equal to the real part of s tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t okay any doubt at this point anyone has any doubt right so now we will begin our canonical representation of bandpass signal by considering this equation okay okay so let's move on so this is the equation that i am going to consider that is s of t is equal to re into s tilde of t into e power j 2 pi f c t right so here this says that the positive pre envelope is equal to the original bandpass signal okay and this can be represented by this equation the same equation so they call it as equation 1 now i also uh, want to represent this complex envelope that is s tilde of t in the cartesian form okay you know that there are two forms rectangle form or cartesian form and polar form so tell me in the chat box how do you represent a complex number or a complex equation in cartesian form what is the general form for representing a complex equation in cartesian form you have studied this in uh, network analysis and many other subjects please answer in the chat box how do you represent a complex quantity in the cartesian form okay uh, manohar is saying r sin okay cos theta okay i'll come to euler and all i am asking you a simple complex equation how do you represent a complex simple complex equation in rectangle form which has real part and imaginary part how do you represent it it is a i'll come to euler's equation it is just a plus i b very good manohar now you are there all of you know this equation right so this is a simple equation to represent the complex quantity right so what i'm going to do is i am going to represent s tilde of t which is a complex envelope or a complex quantity in this cartesian form okay i'm going to represent s tilde of t because it is a complex quantity in this form therefore s tilde of t is equal to s i of t into j into s q of t right so here s i of t and s q of t are your low frequency components these are your low frequency components where call it as equation 2 where s i of t is the in phase component and s q of t is the quadrature phase component so in equation 2 what i have done is i have represented s tilde of t which is a complex quantity in the cartesian form okay now i'll consider these two equations that is s of t and s tilde of t and i will try to compute s of 
t so here this is s of t this is s tilde of t so what i'll do is i'll substitute s of t here in this equation i'll substitute s of t here in this equation for a moment forget about the real part we will try to compute the uh, term that is inside the bracket so s of t can be written as in the place of s tilde of t i'll write this s i of t plus j into s q of t multiplied by e power j 2 pi f c t right we will also then focus on the real part but let, let us first focus on computing the term in the bracket now can you tell me what is the simplified equation of multiplying these two terms with e power j theta so here comes your euler's formula can someone tell me what is the euler's formula what is euler's formula what is e power what is e power i theta equal to Come on, this you should say. What is e power i theta equal to? Give your answer in the chat box. Okay, Amit and Manohar, they have already given. Very good. It is cos theta plus j or i okay, whatever let me consider j itself sin theta okay now when i multiply this si of t plus j into sq of t with this term cos theta plus j i theta what am i going to get can someone type the equation that i'm going to get multiply this si of t plus j sq of t with cos theta plus j sin theta what is the resultant equation it is pretty straightforward right s i of t into cos theta that will be the real part and here you have j again you have we have j here j into j will become j square which is equal to minus one therefore you will have minus sign here into s q of t sin theta okay so the resultant equation will be s i of t cos theta minus s q of t sin theta right so i'll be you making use of euler's formula and while making use of euler's formula i'll also construct the uh, equation for the bar, uh, pass band signal in the standard form or canonical form which is equal to si of t cos 2 pi f c t minus s q of t sin 2 pi f c t okay so this is the resultant equation okay so any doubt at this point any doubt at this point now the real part <coughs> which is the real part here which is the imaginary part do we have a imaginary part in this equation yes or no okay dp be good you have given the right answer good is there a imaginary part in this equation after applying euler's formula yes or no is there any imaginary part obviously no this is the equation for s of t that is the baseband signal equation in terms of in phase component and quadrature component right now all of you please pay attention and listen carefully this point that i'm going to say is very very important uh, in the implementation of the canonical representation now if you look at this equation si of t is your actual low frequency signal and here it is multiplied by your cos function having fc frequency therefore this is a high frequency signal right so here si of t corresponds to your message signal which is a low frequency signal similarly sq of t is a low frequency signal whereas sine 2 pi fct is a high frequency signal right so si of t and sq of t are your low frequency components multiplied by high frequency 
components right so this also indirectly uh, conveys the process of modulation okay it's indirectly conveys the process of modulation call it as equation 3 right so here there is the in phase component this is the quadrature components any doubt in the three equations anyone has any doubt right now what i'll do is i'll try to represent the same in the form of phase r equation so this is the uh, in phase component this is the quadrature component right and uh, this is the formula for computing the magnitude part and this is the formula for computing the uh, phase part and if you could recall to the complex envelope that we discussed uh, before coming to canonical representation what we had done here we had actually shifted we had actually shifted our spectrum by minus fc right so this shifting of minus fc is mimicked by multiplying e power minus j p 2 pi f c t in the time domain right so that is what is shown in the next diagram that i am going to show you so here you can see when i say rotate i am shifting this by minus f c after shifting this by minus f c this is the resultant spectrum that i am going to get which will have a zero center frequency and your frequencies will be at minus w2 plus w so this is the resultant envelope or the spectrum after multiplying by e power j 2 pi fct therefore you can see whatever we have discussed in the complex envelope topic we are trying to realize and visualize the same under canonical representation of bandpass signals okay so next here as i told you in the previous slide si of t and sq of t are your low frequency signal which will have a frequency band of minus w2 plus w and the same can be visualized and implemented using this diagram so all of you please pay attention and listen carefully if you could look at figure b figure b is also called as synthesizer where figure a is the analyzer so first let me focus on the synthesizer and then i'll come to the analyzer so here if you look at synthesizer what this is doing is it is taking si of t and it is multiplying with cos 2 pi fct right which will produce this uh, which will be produced by this oscillator then i'll pass this through minus 90 degree phase shifter because a cos with with the minus 90 degree phase shift produces sine function and then i'll multiply sq of t with sine function and both are clubbed together to produce s of t now this diagram of synthesizer is nothing but the implementation of this equation see here in this equation what do we have si of t cos 2 pi fct minus sq of t sin 2 pi fct isn't it just uh, remove these things so in this equation we have si of t cos 2 pi fct minus sq of t sin 2 pi fct so what we have done in the synthesizer diagram is we have implemented this equation in the form of a block diagram right so if you could recall in the beginning i told you that canonical representation is nothing but the implementation or realization of complex envelope right so here in the synthesizer we have uh, implemented that equation okay now listen to the next point now in the analyzer what i am doing is i am taking this passband signal and i am splitting it into s i of t and s q of t when i talk about s i of t and s q of t these are your low frequency signals these are your low frequency signals or i can say that these are your baseband signals right so when i get my signal components in low frequency or baseband my analysis becomes much easier okay so that is what we are trying to implement or realize using complex envelope the same is implemented using canonical representation which gives us a method to analyze the passband signal in the form of low frequency baseband signal so if you look at this diagram what we have done is we have transformed a high frequency passband signal that is s of t into a low frequency uh, component that is si of t and sq of t i'll repeat in the analyzer what we have done is we have transformed s of t which is the high frequency passband signal or the modulated signal into a low frequency 
component that is SI of T and SQ of T, which is also referred to as your baseband signal, right? Now, analysis of this signal in the baseband becomes much easier, right? So this is what we have been trying to implement using complex envelope. The same can be represented using a block diagram approach under canonical representation, okay? So that's about analyzer and synthesizer. Typically, analyzer is used at the receiver section and synthesizer is used at the transmitter section because as you can see what synthesizer will do it will take your low frequency message signals and it will be combining it into high frequency signal and you will be transmitting it via antenna right and here what is the operation taking place in uh, receiver it will perform reverse operation it will take high frequency and it will get back your low frequency okay so in the analyzer the same can be seen in this diagram of canonical transmitter right so courtesy uh, ning chen so you can see this is the diagram of your canonical transmitter so you can see this gi of t and gq of t are your low frequency signals when i say low frequency signals they are in base band they are in base band so i'll combine these two by performing modulation by using the sine and cos and i'll make this high frequency and you can see i'm transmitting this using antenna right so this is nothing but your synthesizer see this is the synthesizer okay then at the receiver what i'm doing i'll capture the signal from an antenna and then i will use appropriate technique of complex envelope to get gi of t and gq of t in our context it is si of t and sq of t for the purpose of analysis okay so this is the canonical receiver okay thus we can say that by multiplying s i of t with cos 2 pi f c t and s q of t with uh, sin 2 pi f c t, I am able to generate the modulated signal and this uh, signal f c that is the carrier frequency should be having higher bandwidth than w which is obvious and this process of multiplying s i of t with uh, cos 2 pi f c t and s q of t with sin 2 pi f c t is termed as pass band modulation is termed as pass band modulation okay and you can also find the relationship between the cartesian and polar form if i consider the pass band signal s of t you can represent pass band signal in the form of amplitude or envelope a of t and phase phi of t therefore a of t is the magnitude which is given by s i square of t plus s q square of t and phase is given by uh, tan of uh, s q by s i similarly you can also get s i of t by making use of a of t and your cos function so using these four equations you can get your in phase and quadrature phase components from the magnitude and phase of your s of t right so a of t and uh, phi of t are your magnitude and phase of s of t and what is s of t this is the high frequency pass band signal high frequency pass band signal so by using the formula of si of t and sq of t which are your low frequency signals or base band signal you can get the formula for si of t and sq of t in terms of a of t and phi of t which is nothing but the magnitude and phase of s of t okay so therefore canonical representation makes you is nothing but the implementation or realization of complex envelope which can be represented in the cartesian form for better analysis and in turn this is a method which helps us in analyzing our signal in the communication system in the base band rather than in the pass band because if i consider base band it is a low frequency signal therefore analysis of your received signal in low frequency is much easier as compared to analysis of your communication system in high frequency okay so if you look at uh, complex envelope pre envelope in hindsight complex envelope and pre envelope ultimately makes use of hilbert transform which is uh, helping us 
in uh, realizing your complex envelope which is a method to estimate your baseband signal in the presence of passband signal and also this complex envelope put together with the comp uh, pre envelope and hilbert transform is helping us in ultimately reducing the bandwidth which was at a 2w to w if you could recall to the beginning of this module this was our objective so using uh, complex envelope and pre envelope what we have done is we have reduced the bandwidth requirement from 2w to w right in the process we have also coined a method to estimate the baseband signal or compute baseband signal in the presence of passband signal thereby we have also achieved reduction in the bandwidth requirement to just w from 2w okay so which is what is happening in the single sideband suppressed carrier modulation scheme okay so that's about canonical representation of bandpass signals